Now it's time for RTB 101. This is the segment where we talk about practical questions to help equip you to share your faith with friends and family more effectively. And today we're talking about a very common question, can biological evolution explain the history of life? Now many evolutionary biologists argue that there is overwhelming evidence for what is called macroevolution. Here to help me talk about this provocative question is biochemist Dr. Fuzz Rana. Welcome back, Fuzz. Krista, good to be with you again. I think maybe the best place to start this conversation is defining the term macroevolution, because that might be a new term for many of our viewers. Yeah, well, sometimes people like to think about evolution in two distinct categories. Uh, microevolution, which would be variation that happens within a species, or, or events like speciation. So a quick example would be the peppered moths that, that we learn about in biology textbooks, whose wing color change from a a lighter wing color to a darker wing color in response to environmental pollution. And then the other category would be macroevolution. This is where we're looking at evolution that's driving a large scale biological change that typically involves some kind of innovation. So an example would be a wolf-like creature evolving into a whale. Okay, that's a great example in every high school biology text. Now, we have the position here at Reasons to Believe, we're skeptical that the evidence is all 100% going toward uh, supporting biological evolution. But if that's the case, then why are there so many people who believe in evolution? Yeah, well, I mean, th there are two categories of evidences that biologists will point to as evidence for macroevolution. One would be the fossil record that shows a, a history of life uh, that uh, progresses from simple to complex, where at different times in Earth's history, there are different life forms. And so the argument would be that we're seeing an ever-changing history of life on Earth. Therefore, there must be some mechanism driving large-scale evolution. And then the other evidence would be homologies, which is a $25 term that just means shared biological features found in organisms that naturally group together. And so it's these two categories of evidences that oftentimes are cited as evidence for macroevolution. So with that evidence in mind, that there is a case to be made for bio biological evolution, why then are we skeptical that macroevolution is, is true? Well, to me, one of the major sources of my skepticism is the nature of the fossil record. Yes, indeed, the fossil record does show different life forms at different times in Earth's history. But when we look at the history of life on Earth, we see these periods where there are these innovations that take place, major transitions in life's history, and they all happen explosively, not in a gradual, protracted manner like you would expect if evolution was driving this, but it suddenly, without intermediate grades, this is happening at the origin of life, the origin of eukaryotic cells, the origin of body plans. When we look at the history of vertebrates, we see what are called radiation events, where there's explosive diversification in a very narrow window of geological time. We see this for fish, for amphibians, for reptiles, three radiation events for birds, and then for mammals. And so I look at those radiation events as signatures for a creator's involvement because we don't have mechanisms that can account for that kind of rapid transition in an evolutionary context. The, the mechanisms that drive the change in the, the wing color of a peppered moth don't seem to be able to account for those kind of radical transformations. Very good. So when we think about microevolution, there's a lot of good evidence for that. But when we think about macroevolution, we kind of step back and we think, well, there could be some a better explanation here. It could be a creator because we see the fossil record seems to show these these very sudden appearances, which could be interpreted as divine interventions, if you will. Yes. Now, uh, what about this issue of homologies? Doesn't that kind of point to common descent from a, an ancestor? Well, really, what we are looking at here with homologies are patterns that then evolutionary biologists assume evolutionary mechanisms can account for them. But on the other hand, we could look at those patterns and explain them from a creation model or from a design standpoint. 
where the, the, the shared features could reflect common design, not common descent, where if you had an archetypical design in the mind of a creator, that archetypical design could be understood as then being physically manifested in these shared features. So the fact that the fossil record doesn't look like I would expect it to look and that we can explain homologies just as readily in a creation model framework as in an evolutionary framework, to me, tips the scale in favor of creation. So going back to our non-Christian friends, when we're talking to them about evolution, it can get hard for somebody like me who's not a scientist. I can get in the weeds really quickly in that conversation. So what can I do when I'm talking to somebody about evolution? Yeah, and I think what we want to do is avoid uh, saying that that there, there's no way that macroevolution could ever happen. There's no evidence. There's we don't no want to, evidence we don't for want that. To say right. that. Right. We don't want to say that. But rather what we want to do is point out where we see to, to be shortcomings in the theory with the idea that those shortcomings are hopefully disruptive enough to allow people to say maybe, just maybe, there might be a role for a creator in the history of life. And then we can bring to the table more positive evidences for why we think God is involved in, in life's uh, origin and history. So my job isn't necessarily to, to debunk evolution, it's just to ask some questions, well, how do you account for this? Have right. you thought about that? Right, because that, that, that raising that suspicion on their part is critical because many people say, well, if evolution can explain the history of life, why do I need a creator? So all we wanna do is just raise enough questions to get them to think, Maybe, just maybe, a creator might be involved. Very good. And I want to invite you to check out Fuzz's blog. You can just go to reasons.org and search for The Cell's Design for more provocative articles and Fuzz's perspectives as a biochemist.